Behind me is Swindon Railway Works, once the pride of the Great Western, the GWR. They used to call it the Great Way Around, or even God's Wonderful Railway. This is a film about some of his railwaymen and their struggle for survival. Since the age of steam, Swindon Works has been shunted from crisis to crisis. Today, it's still a force to be reckoned with, but the uncertainty remains as the age of the high-speed train passes it by. In a corner of the factory, engine number 40159 meets its death a train spotter's nightmare. This is a graveyard for end-of-the-line locos, where burning hulks whistle in the wind. It's here that British Rail's unwanted engines are reduced to piles of scrap. The men that used to build locos now repair them or break them up. They say they are fighting to make sure their factory is not next in line to be carted away to the scrap heap. I think a part and parcel of a vowed determination that there will be no closure of Swindon Works. There will be a further reduction in the size of it, I feel. But um, we don't talk about those things. I mean, they're not, they don't make sense. They're hypotheses that we don't enter into in our discussions, our negotiations. We don't accept that anybody has a right to close Swindon Works. Danny Lee may feel no one has the right to close Swindon Works, but some have tried. All have failed. There have been marches through the streets. There have been demonstrations in London. There have been lobbies of Parliament. But there has always been something else apart from the protest. I think if one looks at the track record over the last 10 years within the plant itself, uh, it has an enviable record of good labour relations. People have said, of, from all the sections of the factory, the cooperative nature of the enterprise, the willingness to have job flexibility, the need to preserve something which goes back in the years, has had the full cooperation of the workforce. Those skills locked up in this place, benefiting the community and the rail system as a whole, it's most unlikely that some of those skills will be used now in the engineering field outside. Swindon is changing. I think we have to ask ourselves the question, how far do we want to let our manuf manufacturing base drop in the town? Um, 
There's an awful lot of richness and vitality. People use their creative talents within this work situation. When you think about the number of skills there were, and they were skilled, believe me, and the, you know, you had the shitters and turners, coppersmiths, brass finishers, and brass molders and iron molders, blacksmiths, you had the lot, everything that you could think of. You had that skill in there. It was wonderful, it was. Well, all our men are fully trained men. We can tackle any job that's asked us. This goes not only for the machine shop, for Swindon as a whole. Uh, we're not only prepared to do our own work, we'll do private enterprise as well. I think it's special for a number of reasons. But primarily, I believe it's been a pathfinder as a work, as a works, in initiating the need and the necessity to uh, move as TUC policy has dictated now for a number of years into those areas of retraining um, for different skills as the new revolution, the technological revolution develops. Um, and that's a, an enormous subject, but I think it's generally understood now by the whole of the Swindon workforce that the question of flexibility and the interchange of trades and past practices that have uh, stood as in good stead for over a hundred years uh, have to be changed and they've done it with a willingness that uh, is only just now been approached by other engineering concerns and BREL in particular. The Pathfinder workers of Swindon may be flexible, cooperative, highly skilled and willing to tackle anything, but they can never be certain what lies ahead. They're used to reading headlines like these in the evening advertiser which reflect the constant problems. Changes in workload nationally have created instability. The works is reorganizing to cut costs and meet changing requirements. Union men hope this will make the factory more viable. Even so, some have nagging doubts about the future. The constant uncertainty really, when I visit in the rail workshop, is, is shown in the remarks of people on the shop floor. Certainly, the uncertainty varies a great deal according to your, your age. People in their 40s, late 30s, where is the future going? It's beginning to affect them in the sense of, should they look for a job now? Should they wait to find out what the real future is going to be in the rail workshops? So I think in one way, it has to be um, regarded by many other people as very insecure, I think. Retired GWR men like these have seen the work shrink to a much smaller size over the years. They are worried about the future and would be heartbroken to see further decline. When I started work in the railway works, 1920, there was 14 and a half thousand men worked in that work. When I left, it was down to two and a half thousand. And that's 12 years ago. Well, I can't see any future at all. If it's lost all that amount, and half of the factory has been closed down, the original factory stood on about 360, 370 acres. It's down to half that now. And they're still going to uh, destroy the building. How do you feel about the decline of the railway works? I feel shattered, to be honest it's about it. Bad. I mean, that's been my life. I worked on the railways. I, the time I, I completed my education, for what it's worth, and, <laughs> and went into the railways 51 years. That was my whole work in life, and I've had nothing else. So, you know, and to see it being destroyed as it is, and it hurts me very much, because it was the finest railway works in the world. The church has strong historical links with the railway works and clergymen have been outspoken in its defence in recent years. When the threat of redundancies arose once more early this year, Father Rex Hurrell of St Mark's Church in Swindon had this to say. I feel very sad, um, partly because we all pulled together two years ago to help and we got the good news then that the redundancies were lifted. 
So you're, you're sad from that point of view. But you're sad also because as far as we can see, uh, the working men over in the rail works had done all that was asked of them. Um, one of the things that you discover here in Swindon is, 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 the, is the social aspects of, uh, of the work. But, I mean, the railway was the great mother. It was, it, it, it was in effect, the, 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 uh, the feudal landlord, as it were, providing everything for uh, the, the men who worked. Uh, provided schools, churches, uh, amusements, and so on. This was all, it, it, the great social community aspect is the one of the most important ones which you learn about when you're discussing the railway works in Swindon. So the whole community, therefore, is saddened by this kind of news. Now, the men responded to that kind of approach that, that, that the, the railway was the, the father figure, the mother figure, and therefore the children responded by also um, giving them of their best. And this was so even over the last two or three years, that, that when, when the men have been asked to go on to flexi flexi time, when they've asked to, to, to do, take some different training, when they've asked to to uh, undertake different kinds of, uh, of work, they've been happy to do it. There's been no strike. The, the, the strike record is good here. In other words, the men has done, have done uh, all that the management asked them. Uh, and they, had, they were a credit to the British Rail. They were a credit to the other workforce throughout the country. Uh, therefore, um, the men had respect from that, kind of, uh, from, from that kind of approach. But all that to no avail. Despite all the fears, Swindon Works remains a huge industrial operation by any standards. In size, it's still one of the biggest engineering factories in the country. And considering there's been talk of cuts and closures for decades, the fact that it's still open is a feat in itself. I asked Terry Larkham, secretary of the Works Committee, whether he felt the works could survive. I'm sure we can, because in the, uh, in the past, we've been under threat on many, uh, on many occasions, and with the policies of the uh, Works Committee, with full support of the uh, workforce in these works, we, we should su survive, I think, into, right into the 90s. Swindon has a role to play in the modern railway. It's perhaps best known, however, for its glorious past. Steam engines like this, the King George V, emerged from the factory as a showpiece to the world, a triumph of engineering in their day. More recently, the works built locos for Kenya. But there's more to it than that. As you said, we've done the Kenya uh, locomotive, we've done, uh, we've done the uh, buses, we did some uh, boats, we did what they call a Hong Kong traverser, and at this moment we are taking part and they're going to build the prototype of the uh, Atonic Flash uh, wagon. There are very few things that we can't produce in the general engineering field. And I'm sure that the skills which have been uh, developed from the old traditional ones of um, uh, inter-electronics, basic electronics, um, can readily and soon be put into operation with some investment. It would depend on what type of equipment and what investment was made. But I can't really see that, the, that we, would, we would have too much difficulty. I mean, we have personnel now that are members in the factory who are already trained in fitting and electrical work. We're, they've got dual skills. They've, um, and we can assure anyone and everybody that the adaptability of the labor force would make that a comparatively simple operation. This is the wheel shop. Here, many of the skills, even some of the machines, date back to the last century. And that's just as well, because they still do some work on steam locomotive wheels for railway preservation societies. One of the wheel shop men is Roy Pierce, a railway enthusiast and a firm believer in the capabilities of his workplace. Do you think the works is capable of doing a lot more than it is? Oh, yes, a heck of a lot more than what he's doing. It's surprising what can be done here, or what has been done here. It's a great I mean, deal. Sorry. There's a great deal of skills in the works, isn't there? Oh, yes, vast, vast amount of skills, actually. I mean, as I say, there's a lot been done in this place. And it's surprising what can't be done here. I mean, even that press over there has been, was made here. I mean, I, what I mainly work on, and when you think it's, it's nearly 90 years old, I mean, it gives you some idea of the skill that was put together to make it last that long. And what sort of things do you think this works could do if it was given the investment to be able to do it? I would say anything. 
Give it anything, it will build it. Anything you like your fucking name to. They even build boats in here before now. Guns, everything. So do you still feel proud to be associated with the railway oh, works? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, I wouldn't wear that. Yes, you're, you are a fan of the Great Western Railway. Oh, oh yes. I'm a very, very great fan of the Great Western Railway. Rust is blasted off a locomotive tender. But this isn't the railway works. This is a few miles away, in the middle of a field near Blunsdon. In all weathers, all around the year, enthusiasts work on their engines, preserving and cherishing the railway era. At Blunsdon, the spirit of bygone Swindon lives on, another sign of the town's love for trains. Restoring the Swindon and Cricklade Railway is a mammoth task that could take until the end of the century. Just getting one locomotive, port line, from a heap of rust back into steam again will take thousands of hours of work. Yes, it is a, it's going to be a tremendous task it's ahead of us. There's a phenomenal amount of work to do. It's taken us a year just to strip it into the position that we're now in. And the hard, the hard work really now starts. There's a lot of engineering work to be done. A lot of parts will have to go off to professionals to have work done on it. The professionals are men like Bob Blake and Dave Allett, seen here at the furnace in the factory's non-ferrous foundry. Today they're working with molten aluminium to cast seat leg brackets used in BR trains. They make about 8,000 of these here every year. The future of men like these depends upon the future of the railway industry, and that depends on the whole future of transport. Do you think there's a chance that we'll ever go back from the roads uh, to the railways? I do. I think, I, think the, I think the roads have reached a, a, a saturation yeah. point now. Yeah, and like that, that, that's a that, point that I just can't quite understand. We never seem to learn by the experience of others, America, did what we're doing now years ago and they had to go back to the railways in many cases because the roads were really saturated they couldn't cope and well, that's why i think it'll happen here i really do the roads weren't built for these lorries and cars they got now if they open a few more stations they do a lot more trade and they help the road directors as well that is the main trouble around here so i wish <coughs> buses been shipped curtains been shipped all those little stations up the line there. All the way along, yeah. People can come to town, but they can't come to town now because they, can go, they can't get in a car. If they get yeah. the car to come to town, they can't park them. There's no parking space in Swindon for them. That is a trouble. They use the railways, the railways will pay. I think it would. What do you say to those people who feel that the railway industry is old-fashioned, that it's got no place in the world of tomorrow? Well, I don't, I, and people who consider that, that to be the case obviously are not looking at the position as an international question. They, they must be um, part of the motor lobby, as far as I would see it, because it's quite nonsensical to say that uh, the question of railways is something in the past. It's not true. The only thing that, is, that causes us any difficulties as an industry and enables us not to supply what we should do in a social sense and in an economic sense for the good of the country is that we aren't moving fast enough with railways that there isn't enough investment that there isn't enough flair expertise and time and energy spent by governments in developing them and to those people who say that there is no future for railways and that they're a thing of the past um well i mean it's not possible to answer that other than to what i've already said oh that's what the uh Railways need is investment, but uh, at the moment, the policy of the uh, government at the moment, and if you remember a few weeks ago, she said there was a cutback again on the uh, public sector, but that's what we need in the railways because they're, at the moment they're clapped out, uh, the locomotives and that was running at this moment. They used to call the GWR God's Wonderful Railway. Do you think he would have approved of that description? I would think personally, yes. And I think uh, people on the whole, Christians on the whole, would see, as we see here, the rail network stretching for miles along this track here, 
as part of the past. And I think we also have to look at what the railways have given to us as communities. Uh, we have to look at their values, the transport facility, and today, of course, more importantly, the conservation element. Um, the right use of God's creation in terms of the right use of fuel and equipment, conservation. Certainly, uh, the, the, the railways have a, a very safe accident record. I don't think it'd be bettered by any other transport system. And we have to ask questions when we talk about um, the transfer of rail to road, for instance, what the true costs of running a railway system are as compared with the road. That I think, in a way, uh, we don't really give the true social value of a rail system to the community. No. Swindon as a community is changing. The new technological revolution towers over the old town, which is engulfed by the silicon chip boom. Hundreds of new companies have moved in. Ironically, even British Rail is expanding, with the prestigious new office headquarters for the western region being set up in the town centre. The move of the new HQ ensures Swindon remains an important railway town. Also keeping the railways at the forefront are a group of proud GWR men who tour the area as a male voice choir. On the question of survival, it's, um, it's a question that I, it would be extremely foolhardy to give a definite answer insofar as it's not really possible in the present industrial and economic climate with the present governmental policies to say what major traditional industry will or will not survive. But as far as this factory is concerned, we with, within BREL and Swindon in particular um, have, providing that the standards for competition and the equality of opportunity to compete for repair, new work, whatever it may be, I see no reason at all to consider that the, the latest set of uh, problems that we're being confronted with here in Swindon for the workforce and on behalf of the workforce are any different, are any less severe, are any more likely to bring about the closure than three or four times we've been faced with a similar situation in the past decade. So, whilst one couldn't say, I give a 22 carat, yes, we're going to stay open, um, I can't see that there's any difference at the present time than there has been in the past. I was a young man of 20 years of age, hadn't seen a ship before in my life, joined, had to join a ship at Dover in, in the channel, uh, catch a small boat and go out to join the ship in the channel. I immediately had to go on the bridge to sign the ship's articles, and the captain asked me where I served my time, meaning my apprenticeship, and I said I'd served it in the Great Western Railway, and he turned around and said to me, they make good engineers. So that was all the qualifications you needed then? Well, that was all, well, not really. I had my trade papers, but he seemed quite happy with me, sight on scene, you know, as an engineer, yeah. as a young man. So what do you feel about the skills in here? Well, I feel very bad about it because the skills in this town, in engineering, heavy engineering, especially locomotive building, is second to none, in my opinion. We can go anywhere in the world and still do a good job as in heavy engineering. It's a pity that there wasn't more engineering for the chap to go to, or light engineering, heavy engineering, then everybody would be happy. One mile of motorway takes 40 acres of land. One mile of railway track 
takes one acre. Now then, when you consider all that food producing land, it's gone. Over hundreds of miles on the motorways, 40 acres per mile. The railway, one acre per mile. Mm -hmm. Difference, isn't it? And that's it. And you don't get the air pollution. With the train as you do with thousands of motor cars and every lorries. Right, They're yeah. just realizing now that even the forests are dying, being poisoned by the poisoned atmosphere. It'd be a good thing to do away with it, I think. I really do. And mm -hmm. I, that's why I think eventually they will have to go back to the railway. Mm -hmm. I hope they do. Not to make any difference to me where I go, because they, they won't have the railway there, perhaps, but... <laughs> You're going on your bike. I'm going on my bike. <laughs> <laughs>